Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss self-organizing feature maps with a simple solved example. Consider the network shown in figure. In this case, we have been given four training samples. Each sample is a vector of length 4 and two output units. x1, x2, x3, x4 are the input uh, training examples. y1 and y2 are the output units in this case. Given this particular network, we need to train the self-organizing feature map by determining the class membership of the input data. So given the input data, we need to assign this particular input data to one of these particular output units in this case. So we have been given four input data, x1, x2, x3, x4, x1 is equal to 1010, x2 is equal to 1000, x3 is equal to 1111, x4 is equal to 0110 in this case. Also, we have been given uh, the two output units as said earlier that is uh, unit 1 and unit 2. The learning rate is uh, 0.6 and the initial weight matrix is also given to us. The initial weight matrix is uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 and uh, 0 0.2 with respect to unit 1 that is nothing but this is equal to 0.3 here, this is equal to 0.5, this is uh, 0.7, this is 0.2. Similarly, with respect to unit 2, we have these particular the weights that is nothing but this will become a, a 0.6 here. This particular thing will become 0.5, this will be 0.4 and this one will be 0.2 over here. So this is what is given to us. Given this particular data, we need to assign those particular training examples to one of these particular output units in this case. So in the first iteration, what we do is we will consider the first training example. Also, we have been given this particular weight matrix. Using this particular training example and the weight matrix, we calculate something called as Euclidean distance. So Euclidean distance is uh, given by this particular formula. Let us say that uh, we have been given two points, that is uh, P1 and P2. P1 consists of uh, X1, Y1 and P2 is nothing but X2, Y2 here. So the distance between this P1 and P2 is the square root of X2 minus X1 bracket square plus y2 minus y1 bracket square. Now uh, we will try to calculate the distance between this particular training example and this particular unit that is uh, x1 to this particular first unit here. That is uh, distance square we have calculated just to remove this particular square root here. The distance square is always equal to 0.3 minus 1 bracket square that is nothing but this particular bracket square plus 0.5 minus 0 bracket square. 0.7 minus 1 bracket square and last one is 0.2 minus 0 bracket square and once you solve this particular thing we will get 0.87 uh, d square is equal to 0.87 if we calculate the d it should be square root of 0.87 over here similarly we will calculate the distance from this particular training example to the second weight vector that is uh, 0 0.6 minus 0 1 bracket square 0 0.7 minus 0 bracket square 0 0.4 minus 1 bracket square 0.3 minus 0 bracket square here and once you solve it you will get 1.1 in this case again if you want to calculate d d is equal to square root of 1.1 now if you compare these two distances the first distance is smaller that is the distance from training example to the first weight vector the meaning of this one is unit 1 wins in this particular case so once we find that uh, which particular unit has won this particular iteration we need to update those particular weights here to update those particular weights we use this particular equation wj t plus 1 that is the new weights is always equal to that's the old weights plus the learning rate multiplied by input minus the uh, old weights over here so that is nothing but the new weights of uh, unit 1 is equal to the old weights that is uh, wjt plus learning rate multiplied by the input minus the old weights over here so first we will calculate the input minus old weight, we will get this particular value that is nothing but 1 minus 0 0.3 is equal to 0 0.7 here, 0 minus 0 0.5 is equal to minus 0 0.5 and so on. And then we will multiply these two things, once you multiply these two things you will get this particular weight vector and then once you add these two things we will get the final weight vector over here. So the updated weight vector after the first input is this one. That's the first uh, unit one weights are modified and we got this particular thing. 
Next, we will go to the second iteration. In the second iteration, we will consider the second training example that is 1000. Again, we will calculate the distance from this training example to these particular weight vectors that is this particular distance and this distance. So the first distance is 0.72 minus 1 bracket square that is what I have written here. 0.2 minus 0 bracket square that is what I have written here. Similarly, we need to write the remaining things and then we will get this particular weight that is 0.74 in this case. Now we need to calculate the distance from uh, second input uh, training example to the unit 2 here that is 0.6 minus 1 bracket square, 0 0.70 bracket square and so on. Once you solve it again we will get 0.9 here. So between these two things that is 0 0.74 and 0 0.9, 0 0.74 is minimum. The meaning of this one is the unit 1 wins this particular iteration here. Again we need to update the unit 1 weights here. We need to use the same equation. Uh, again, uh, we need to write that particular old weights plus the learning rate, the input minus the old weights here. So once you solve this particular thing, we will get the new weights something like this. So the old weights are updated and we got this particular new weights uh, for this particular unit number 1 in this case. Now we will go to the third iteration. In the third iteration, we consider the third example. The third example is 1, 1, 1, 1 here. We need to calculate the distance from this uh, training example to these particular units that is unit 1 and unit 2. Uh, the distance square is equal to 0.89 minus 1 bracket square that is what I have written here 0 0.08 minus 1 bracket square. Similarly, we need to write the remaining things and once you solve it, we will get 2.2 as the distance here. So the distance from third training example to this second unit is 0 0.6 minus 1 bracket square. 0.7 minus 1 bracket square and so on. Once you solve it, you will get 1.1 here. Now, if you compare these two distances, 1.1 is smaller compared to 2.2. The meaning of this one is you need to win this particular iteration. Because unit 2 has won this particular iteration, we need to update the weights with respect to unit 2 here. Again, we use the same equation, but only thing is we update the weights with respect to second unit over here. The second unit's so old weights, learning rate, training example and this is the second unit's uh, old weights here and again we need to solve this particular thing we will get the new weights something like this and that is what I have written here the old weights are replaced with new weights for this particular unit number 2 in this case. Now we go to the fourth iteration in the fourth iteration we consider the fourth training sample again we need to calculate the distance from this one to unit 1 and unit 2 we have calculated the distance here the distance from fourth training sample to unit 1 is equal to 2.06. The distance from fourth training example to unit 2 is equal to 1.3 in this case. Again, between these two, 1.3 is the minimum. The meaning of this one is the unit 2 has won this particular iteration. We need to update these particular weights here. So these weights are already known to us. We need to update these weights using this particular equation. So the old weights plus the learning rate the training example minus the old weights. Again, we need to solve it. We will get the new weights with respect to second unit in this case. So I have replaced the old weights with the new weights here. After this particular fourth iteration, we have consumed all the inputs. Now we will see how the mapping has been done here. The first example and the second training example has been assigned to unit one. Third and fourth were assigned to unit number two in this case. So this entire thing is you can say that one epoch over here. So we need to consume all the training examples. Once you consume all the training examples and you assign this particular training example to one of those particular units, it will be called as one epoch over here. Now what we need to do is we need to repeat such kind of epochs unless and until there is no movement of these particular training examples from one unit to another unit here. So they should converge to one of these particular units like uh, the training example should be assigned to one of those particular units. They are not moving from one unit to another unit in this case. So we need to repeat such uh, epochs again and again. If there is no moment of training examples from one unit to another unit, you need to stop over there. That will be the final mapping of this particular self-organizing feature maps over here. So in this video, I have discussed uh, how can we apply self-organizing feature map technique to assign the input training examples to the output units over here. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.